Hello and welcome back to Quartz Light, your car brochure channel. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the Mercedes 190 or W201. Welcome back to Quarterlight, and if you are into car brochures, please do subscribe, um, I'm sure there'll be something here for you. Today's episode though, is for the Mercedes-Benz 190-190E, sometimes known as the W201. It was Mercedes' first venture into sort of like the compact class, uh, still at a time when Mercedes were making really well built cars. It was first introduced at the Paris Motor Show in 1982. Uh, right hand drives didn't arrive though till September 1983. Today's brochure is January 1984 so it is an early one for the UK market. Designed by Bruno Sacco um, and it was typically Mercedes in its design. But let's have a look at today's brochure and see what we can see. So there we go, the brochure itself, and like I say, UK, January 1984, this particular one is. Uh, this particular brochure is showing uh, what it refers to as the new 190 and 190E, Mercedes engineering in the latest, most compact form. I do remember when these came out, um, and a lot of people said, uh, me included as a very young boy, this is not a, this is not a Mercedes, because it looked so small compared to the um, Mercedes-Benz of old, uh, but it really was, it was just a Mercedes on a smaller scale, um, and like I say, this was at the time when Mercedes weren't really cost-cutting, it was a very over-engineered car, um, and it continued the reputation of Mercedes-Benz being a very solid vehicle. Unfortunately, when the replacement came, the Mercedes-Benz uh, C-Class, uh, everything changed. Um, but maybe we might mention that a little bit later on. But anyway, let's look at the brochure itself. First of all, we have a lovely image of the 190E. Um, this, in this case, it's having the uh, headlamp washers. This brochure um, is showing the cars at launch. So the first two models that came out were the 190, 190E, with the 1997cc inline four engine. And it talks a little bit in this brochure about how that four uh, cylinder engine is uh, as good, if not better than some of its rivals six cylinder engine. A very lengthy, uh, wordy first page. We'll have a glimpse at some of this, but I don't want to go into huge details, otherwise the, the video will go on too long, I think. So I picked this little section out here. It says the Mercedes 190 and 190E set new standards for compact cars. They are cars which incorporate, in addition to the advantage of smaller dimensions, the benefits of a genuine Mercedes, superior on the road, unparalleled quality. And after you, if you remember at this sort of time, there was no sort of fault about being small cars as being luxury cars. We thought of large cars as being the luxury, luxury quality cars. At this time, small cars were just cheap vehicles to get about. So Mercedes were kind of like looking at this from a different angle, thinking, you know, people still like to have smaller cars in cities, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't have that quality. It goes on to say the best value for money in a compact car, the benefits of the latest in automotive engineering added to the lasting value of classic Mercedes quality. And certainly that classic Mercedes quality was still in this Mercedes, just in a smaller package. And then it goes on to say, by their looks, the new Mercedes 190, 190E epitomised the new standards. It says here, the Mercedes-Benz 190 sets a new standard of excellence for medium-sized saloons, said the Financial Times on the 11th of December 1982. So I, should, I suppose we should mention what 190E really means. E um, was really the fuel injected car. So E uh, was referring to in German as 
um, Einspritz or Einspritzung. Terrible pronunciation, so I do apologise to the German-speaking viewers. I will pop the actual word um, at the top there so you can look at, but basically meaning that the E versions were the fuel-injected versions. On the next page, a couple of quite interesting things here. Um, I was always surprised how aerodynamic the 190 was. It really looks a very boxy car, doesn't it? But surprisingly good coefficient. Um, if I just look at the bottom of the page there. So it's in here, coefficient um, of drag 0.33, extremely low for a production compact car. And that's pretty good considering how square the design really is. Um, there's just one more thing on this page that I find very interesting as well. And it talks about the individualistic range of colours. It says, to enhance the individuality of the new model, there are a choice of 26 colours, 17 standard colours and 9 metallic finishes. Just think about that, how amazing it would be to pick from 26 colours. Um, if you look at a modern car, what have we got? Whites, greys, blacks seem to be all we've got and various shades of that. But 26 colours. I wish we would go back to a time where 26 colours were still offered. It goes on to say the wide range of upholstery materials and interior colours create further opportunities to give each car a special personal touch. So I really like that, I must admit. And then on the opposite page is a nice sort of side view of the Mercedes. Really the space was really lost on this compact. It was a lot smaller for rear passengers, although the boot size was actually quite reasonable. So it's saying here on the next page about the engine, so lively performance for the enthusiast, surprisingly low fuel econ economy or consumption, should I say. So like I say, at this time, we've just got one engine, a 1997 CC inline four. And it gives us a look at some of the fuel economy. So we will look at that as well. So we've got a choice of a four speed auto or a five speed manual. And for the four-speed auto, we're looking at like 40 uh, miles per gallon um, at a constant 56 or 48.7 if you choose the five-speed manual gearbox. Although I always think with a, with a Mercedes, I think you're better with an automatic. I don't think the, the five-speed manuals were quite as good. Then it starts talking about the 190E with the, uh, it says to the first electro electronic mechanical fuel injection system. And it gives you an idea of the performance as well. Stand still to 69.8 seconds, top speed of 121. And then on the far side, it gives a little bit of an image of that newly developed um, fuel injection system for the 190E. And then over leaf, we get this nice image of this red 190 with again these headlamp washers. Um, an A plate, so a UK car. Um, the A designates the year if you don't know and you're not from the UK. That would mean it's a car um, that was uh, sold or on the road from August 1983 to July 1984, the start of the new registrations. And then it finally gives us some fuel economy figures for the 190E. So the four-speed automatic at a constant 56 is doing 41 miles per gallon compared to 48.9 for the five-speed uh, manual. And as we get to the next page, it looks like an ordinary page, but it is quite a detailed brochure, this showing um, the suspension layout. And then you you fold it out still, and it gives further detail so quite a concise little brochure this and we'll find there's lots of these little openings and extra bits within this brochure as we move it over we get another image of the 190 uh, showing actually one wiper blade um, it doesn't really show it in this brochure but i do believe the early ones had one wiper blade with a, another very small wiper blade on there. They lost that second little blade later on in production and just had one wiper with a very clever 
um, sort of up and down mechanism, which meant it really, for one wiper, it swept that front windscreen really well. Uh, then we then look at the interior, typically German, typically uh, Mercedes. Um, I guess not that much equipment on it really by today's standard, um, but it was very straightforward, very plain. Um, the electric window mechanisms at the bottom here. This is quite a high spec model, I do believe. Looks like it's quite well equipped, this particular one. Uh, but, you know, it worked. It had a good feel to it. Um, I always think with these, um, whereas like Citroen was trying to make everything fingertip control at this time, um, Mercedes tend to kind of like scatter the buttons around a little bit, I must admit. Strange places for the windows, like, like I say. Um, this particular model, the 190, it had a sort of standard handbrake. Um, a lot of the other Mercedes actually had a foot operated, um, uh, not handbrake, I guess, parking brake switch sort of thing in there. They had to put the handbrake here, um, basically because it was a smaller car. There really wasn't enough room in there for any more um, uh, switches there. So they had to go by a more conventional um, standard handbrake system. And then at the opposite side, um, we get this strange mirror, probably not a good one to look at, but the passenger mirror was smaller than the driver's mirror. And again, another look at some of those controls. And then it's supposed to talk about safety, even though it's a compact car. It says all the safety of Mercedes with a compact 14 foot six. So it's trying to show you that even though it's a smaller car, it is still um, a very safe car to get around. And then another look at that red 190. And then overleaf, we do get some images um, during a crash test to show how safe the car is. And then further on, we do get sort of a little bit of a graphic about this wiper. It's a shame it doesn't actually show the wiper itself, but it's trying to tell us that, that it's sweeping 75% uh, uh, of the screen. So it's a really good considering it's just that one arm. Um, at the bottom here, it's kind of like showing um, how um, well it would resist corrosion. We've got an electro galvanized a steel sheet which is shown by this blue and um, the, the pink color is showing uh, cavity protection and finally the black is showing these plastic wheel arch liners to showing it will stand up to the conditions as we flip the page over it's then showing this like strengthening bar to help during a crash we then have a look at the rear of the Mercedes. This time it's 190E, so it gives you an idea how the badging is. Uh, it's very simple, 190E badging on there. We've got, again, got this traditional, I guess we probably see it even better here, the traditional rear lights with this rib pattern uh, said to be able to uh, keep it cleaner by having this sort of ridged pattern. I don't know how true that was, but that was the idea, and they did it for a lot. A lot of years so there must be some truth in um, aiding visibility by keeping your rear lights cleaner and also this big uh, rear windscreen it said aerodynamically that would self clean um, because of the aerodynamics of the 190e again not seeing it happening in real life how effective that was but that's what Mercedes did claim um, also on this side it's got a similar sort of flap that you could open up give you a close look at the front again a sort of like a rib design on this uh, indicator here as well it also gives us some uh, detailed specification which speeds are interesting for Mercedes brought to show top speeds um, often on the earlier brochures they didn't really publish them because it, they weren't really talking about how fast the car was they were showing how luxurious it was and to be honest with you a lot of Mercedes um, weren't that particularly fast but we're talking here um, so for the 190 um, top speed of 109 miles per hour um, around about 12 and a half seconds for the 0 to 60 
compared to the 190E with that fuel injection, helped it quite a bit. So we're down to about 9.8 seconds for the manual, 10.3 um, seconds for the auto, and a top speed of 121. Um, so that really did help the speed, that fuel injection system. The 190E was obviously the one to get. Um, the auto transmission top speed a little bit less at 118 miles per hour. Back to the red car as well, showing sort of how fantastically engineered uh, your new Mercedes is, and a little bit of a glimpse of how the dealerships looked at that time. Before moving on to the 190, 190E standard equipment, so we will have a look at that. Okay, so for Mercedes here, they've gone for a very text uh, orientated standard equipment list. A lot of brochures at this time went for a, a more clearer uh, table style, uh, showing your know, black dots for standard, white dots for uh, optional extras, but um, this is how Mercedes decided to do it on this particular brochure. So it's telling us here on both the 190 and 190E, it was a 1997 CC engine. Transmission, of course, a fully synchromesh five-speed manual or the optional Mercedes-Benz four-speed auto, which I'd imagine would have been the more popular choice. And then he's talking about some of the suspension, the brakes, steering, uh, bodywork, seats, heating and ventilation. Um, and then it's talking about, you know, the windows, the lighting, the signal equipment, the locks, the instruments, and the miscellaneous. Uh, so interesting things about the miscellaneous, we've got a wood veneer insert on the centre console, oddment trays between the front seats, pockets on the front doors, glove compartment, panoramic rear view mirror adjustable to anti-glare position, uh, padded sun visors, vanity mirror, mirror on the passenger side, grab handles on the roof frame, clothes hooks on the rear grab handles, padded armrests on the doors, grab handles on the front passenger side, cigar lighter, ashtrays front and wit rear, carpeted throughout, towing lugs front and rear, warning triangle. I always liked the Mercedes to put that warning triangle in because when you lifted the boot up, it was straight at the top of the boot. I always thought that was a nice little thing. First aid kit in the parcel shelf. So if you sat in the rear, you didn't have to go into the boot to uh, get your first aid kit. It was on the parcel shelf, which was nice. Tool kit, uh, firmly anchored three point, point inertia real safety belts, both in the front and on the outer rear seats. Center rear seat with lap belt. And then we've got the technical data for the 190. You can always pause if, if you want to read through that. Um, and then the technical data for the 190E. It then gives us some nice little graphics about you know the, the size of the usual graphics showing the dimensions of the vehicle itself. And a little bit marked on the back cover, sadly, this one, but you can see the date there, January 1984. So that is the Mercedes-Benz 190-190E brochure. So there we go, the Mercedes-Benz 190-190E. At a time when Mercedes-Benz were still making cars, um, that they wanted to be strong, long-lasting vehicles. They weren't counting the pennies, and the results really showed for themselves. They still had a fantastic reputation. I'm sure there's many on the roads today. And as a starter classic, I'm sure they'd be a fantastic car to buy. Sadly, the 190-190E um, was replaced by the Mercedes-Benz C-Class. The C-Class was a different animal. Yes, it was an evolution of this Mercedes, but unfortunately by this time the accountants had got involved in Mercedes-Benz and there was a certain amount of cheapening of the car and it really showed in the quality and kind of like Mercedes-Benz for me was never the same again.
Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Course Light. There'll be many more brochure videos coming soon, so please do subscribe, like, and comment, and we'll see you very soon. Take care, and goodbye.